So your goal here, again, drive traffic off YouTube, sell something, not ad revenues. Um, and uh, in terms of what to include in your video, so this is what I include in my videos. It's a bit of a formula when I go through and I'm trying to take someone from YouTube to take them off YouTube to convert them elsewhere. So I'll do a quick intro and I, I've got quick in all caps there. I'm not a huge fan of all caps generally, but I really mean it. Online video attention spans are plummeting and have been for a long time. Like if you, uh, if you look at the viewer graphs on, on most online video, the number of people to, that make it to two minutes, if that's 10 people, by the time you get to three minutes, you're down to five or less. So like it really, really starts to drop off quite quickly. And especially in that first five seconds of the video, that's your moment to catch people's attention. So that's really one where you wanna grab them with an intro. Uh, I show a link to my site. So I'll start with, hi, I'm Greg and I'm gonna talk to you. Or I might even not say, hi, I'm Greg, because that's wasting time. They don't need to who I am, know who I am. Pretty much in that first moment of that video, I'm gonna talk about whatever the video title was, because that's what they're looking for. So if the video title is funny cats in that first video, you wanna see a funny cat. If you got some guy talking about how he's gonna show you a funny cat, you're gone. So right away, you wanna start talking about it. And then I show a link. So I don't talk about a link. I don't say there's more resources or at the end of my video, I'll direct you elsewhere, but I'll pull a link up and I'll show people where they can go. And the great thing with the YouTube annotations is you can now link directly from the video outside of YouTube. So they can actually click on something on your video and, and leave YouTube. Yeah. Right away, would you put that up? Uh, I often do right at the beginning and just says more resources, click here, and then it goes away. And I'll bring it in and out pretty quickly because then there's this sort of fear of loss of, oh, did I just miss an opportunity? It's not in your face for too long. And then when you bring it back in at the end of the video later, they're more likely to click on it because they kind of missed it the first time. Yeah, so I generally bring something up pretty quickly right at the beginning. Uh, I dive into the good stuff immediately. So put your best foot forward, your best stuff up front. And this actually applies to the entire YouTube experience is in my, one of my online courses now is about 80 hours in length. And I've got maybe my best hour, hour and a half on YouTube, the best stuff. So you put the best quality video, the best things you're producing, the best advice that you have, throw that out there for free as with so much in the way of in internet marketing. Uh, so you put the good stuff up there and, and get to it right away, dive right into. If you've promised them five points about how to sleep train your toddler, then point number one, sleep training your toddler, you wanna make sure that you, whatever that is. Uh, offer value, so again, this is about putting your best stuff up there. Make sure that it isn't a sales pitch. You don't wanna be talking, I see too many people in their YouTube video saying, come on over to my website where I'm gonna teach you all sorts of great things. No, start teaching them right away and then once they start to trust you and build trust in you as they go through that video, then they can leave later and you can promote things later. Ask for comments, this is a good one for sure. Uh, comments, as we'll talk later, will actually start to drive up the power of your video and the relevance and popularity of your video. So don't forget to ask people to comment on it. Don't do this at the beginning. So this is kind of an order. I do a quick intro, I show a link as I'm doing it, I dive right into the good stuff, I offer value throughout the core of the video, and then it's only towards the latter half that I might ask for a comment. Um, then you have a call to action. That's what you want them to do. So at the end of my videos, it's usually, if you want more free stuff just like this or more videos, check out my website where you can get this. And then there's the link uh, that people can go and check out more stuff. So it's a pretty simple process, uh, but that's kind of the formula that I use to drive people, take them from just checking out a simple YouTube video to leaving to go to my site to sign up. So uh, one more thing that you can add is kind of an advanced ending that I started doing after I had a few videos up is at the end of the video, and you'll see this on a lot of YouTube channels now, is they'll show you some other videos to watch. So when I was watching this bike video last night, uh, the first one was how to clean your bike in five minutes. And at the end of the video, it had uh, two to four other videos on each. I went through a whole bunch on the channel because they had this. But at the end of each video, they had the start of the next videos playing and this isn't something that YouTube does automatically for you, but you actually edit it right into your video and you show little screenshots or uh, picture in pictures of your subsequent videos and you turn them into annotations or buttons that link to your next video. So when you get to the end of the video of how to clean your bike in five minutes, uh, you're now presented with two more videos and saying, do you wanna see the 30 minute bike cleaning advanced video or do you wanna go on to degreasing your chain? Yeah. Uh, those videos, are they uh, from Final Cut Pro or is it in the actual YouTube editing? Are they from... How do you, how do you actually put those um, next videos onto the end of the video? Uh, so typically you do that in your video editing software. So you would actually, when you're editing the video, 
uh, when you, if you're using something like uh, Adobe Premiere or ScreenFlow or Camtasia or any even iMovie stuff like that you can do picture in picture where you've got one video clip coming and at the end you'll drop in another couple of video clips and resize them so they're small and they'll sit within that frame and then you can put a title and say video number two video number three and then when you upload it to YouTube it's hard coded into your video even if you just share that video file with someone they'll see it there but then you turn the buttons on in YouTube so you go into YouTube annotations and you add an annotation over top of each of those videos and each annotation will link to that video the only thing about that is you have to already have those videos up on YouTube to do it. So you can't really do it with your first video, but your second one might finish with a link to your first one. Thank you. Uh, sorry. <coughs> yeah, quick question. For your last point about call to action, do you actually verbalize that on your video or do you have that pop up kind of as a link like for more? Written? I do both. So the call to action at the very beginning of the video with the link is, is silent. I'm already diving into the good stuff. Uh, the call to action at the end, I will actually, so I'll ask you for comments and then I'll ask you for the call to action or sometimes I mix it up. Uh, but uh, yeah, a verbal call to action saying if you want more stuff because you've got their attention. Uh, the other thing to note is that there's a huge drop off like 90 plus percent in the last few seconds of your video. As people see it coming towards the end of their video, they're gonna leave, right? Very few people stick around to the end. So another thing I will do is tack on some extra time to the end of the video. So in the timeline, it kind of looks like there's more coming and that works great if uh, you still want to have something there, right? Because you don't want to just cut to black and they're like, what's wrong with this video? Uh, but if you have a link, if you have an annotation, if you have the next two videos to watch and you just have them hang out there for a while, that will keep people around. Because typically if it's coming towards the end of the video, people see there's 30 seconds left. Sounds like your voice is winding down. They'll be already looking for the next thing to hit. But if that's where your call to action is, you still want them paying attention. So as you're coming towards the end of what really is your video, give your call to action and then tack on a bit more. And that can be annotations to other videos. It can just be, a st I've just done a static link to my site. So I just bring up an image uh, in the video uh, with my logo or a link to the site. And then I'll put an annotation button over top of it to link to my site. And I'll let that sit there for 30 seconds. Uh, so the process of people going through finding your video and then making it through and purchasing something, first they're searching. They're either searching on YouTube or they're searching on Google, occasionally other places where they're finding your YouTube video, they're watching your video. You're trying to get them to click or occasionally actually enter the URL into the, into the uh, bar at the top. Uh, and then you're getting your conversion. And at that point, you're getting them to buy something, sign up for something, uh, or generally what I shoot for is an email because the kind of people who are watching your video on YouTube are generally looking for free help, at least initially, until you've built some trust and convinced them that you have something worth purchasing.